picture's worth a thousand words. I almost broke my neck. Okay, guys, we're getting ready. Put some skirts on the bottom. Finish this off here. Finish off on the back. So, let's keep going. I don't have time to talk to you guys, sorry. I don't want to be rude. Okay, guys. We got that top edge epoxy around. In that area down there, which looks good. I'm not going to 2K that. We'll let this set up for an hour or so. And we'll come back, we'll seal it and paint it. Okay, and seal it. And seal it here. Okay, let's mix up some more paint. There's two. Still a tad bit foggy. Very good. Well, they couldn't play more appropriate of a song. Barefoot, baby. The stuff you see laying on here is just stuff that landed when I'm peeling the paper off at this point. The good around here, the good around here. There's still a couple of tiny little pieces of tape in there. I'm going to let this fully cure before I get it out. Still a little back mass in there. But that was taped over, that's why it looks that color. I got to remember that when I open the gate. I got nothing to hold the gate up right now. I took all the arms off. So, so it's the same color. Oh man, I haven't seen you in a while. Hopefully, I don't find the magic razor blade. And yes, I forgot to do the gas door. <laughs> so, started peeling the tape off here. Yeah, we did good on the jams. Still got a little tape over there. For the most part. Good except for right there where the hinge touches it. Really open. But, uh, there you go. The this should only take a month to get these two fenders done, two years later repair. So, we did good. All the stuff you see laying on top of here, I mean there's a couple of speckles of dirt in there, is all for me peeling the paper off. Uh, paint is dry, but I wouldn't uh, put much effort on it, you know, much pressure. Uh, this is like two hours into it, so the sheen will still can become a little more uniform, like all the stuff here. So. Definitely uh, pleased. Definitely, definitely, definitely pleased. Um, of course, you could always ask for better, but a satin black is a tricky thing, guys. It's a tricky, tricky, tricky thing because you can't send out your mistakes. So it's being—it's like being an amateur spackler, putting the spackle on the wall and painting over it. You're gonna see flaws. You know what I mean? So paint has to be pretty bad for you not to be able to wet sand and wheel it. So whatever you see is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I think we did pretty damn good. Pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. I love the color contrast. I think it's gonna look sharp outside. Um, I think it's gonna start to look better as things go back in the car. You know, the correct wheels, the nose on the car, the scoop coming through. Uh, like I said, we're going back with the aluminum jobby. I got it packaged up there. I always liked that scoop. Um, never liked the color of the carburetors. That silver. I think they were actually, uh, what did he coat them with? Um, um, not nickel. He coated them with something, the guy. The guy that builds the carburetors. Um, that was the only way he did the carburetors. I wanted them to tr traditional gold. 
which they probably wouldn't be that gold if I think they're on the car now eight years. So, but we're definitely going to uh, do a little work on them. The linkage and stuff like that, meaning the arms on the carburetor need to be redone and some of the screws. We could definitely spruce them a little. So that's actually the next thing we're going to do on the car after the car's reassembled is we're going to pop the intake off. I want to redo the paint on the intake, clean up the carburetors, put it back together and we're good. Everything else is good under the hood. Um, the lower half of the intake is showing a little age. So I wish it was the upper half. <laughs> the lower half on this car sucks to do, literally. Every bolt has perfect access around it. You couldn't ask for more. But there is so much machine work done to the heads that technically the intake was supposed to be uh, machined to match it. So you're just catching the bolts. <clears throat> But since the ports and the heads were raised, the actual intake matches it perfectly, but the intake should have been machined, so it makes it very hard to do. And on an AMC, you use uh, the tin valley pan gasket, and every port has seal around it. So you go up against the wall with a time limit of about 10 minutes to get it seated down, and let me tell you, it's stressful. It's stressful. First one I did on an engine stand, and it sucked. The second one we did in the car sucked even more. So, with that said, I forgot to do the gas cap. Oh well. And I didn't do the front piece. So, I'll probably uh, pop this out one day, do those two, and uh, move on from there. The hood's probably not going to be done. I'm not thinking the hood's going to be done until the spring. Maybe I'll do it before then. I'm really not eager to do the hood. Uh, I'd like to see if I can come up with a solution to control the dirt a little better. Um, this, I epoxied it, let it sit an hour and a half, tacked it, uh, sealed it, tacked it, and uh, after that I didn't tack it anymore. So, but uh, with that said, guys, uh, I think we're good. I think we're definitely good. So. I'll leave the cover off for about a day. Maybe tomorrow I'll come back out. I'll lay something over the top. Just to keep shit from landing on it. So, so now I'm going to take a break from it. Probably for a couple of weeks. week or two. Uh, I got a couple of things to do in the house. And I got a... Old destination I have to visit. That I left. Uh, uncompleted. That's one way of wearing it. So... I'm going to be doing that for the next couple of weeks. Going back there. So we'll deal with that. So I'm not sure how much work we're going to do out here.